Welcome to That's the Word, wholesome tales for the whole family. I'm Father James Yamauchi. Today's story, Divine Detour. The day was coming to a close as Thamus finished his meal. It was an uneventful day for the Egyptian seamen, and this was good news as he piloted a ship of freight and passengers to Italy on the Ionian Sea. Thamos breathed in the sea air as he gazed westward, watching the sun descend its celestial throne to give way to the darkness. There was no wind, and all was calm. Suddenly, a mysterious voice from the nearby island called out across the water. It was a loud voice shouting a name, shouting, Thamus. Thamus was momentarily paralyzed. Why was this voice calling him? Everyone wondered at the strange voice, but Thamus kept quiet. The call came a second time. Thamus! The murmuring grew on the ship. Thamus said nothing, avoiding eye contact with everyone. While he was not known by name to many on board, he knew it was impossible to conceal his identity forever. By the time the voice called out his name once more, Thamos knew he had no choice but to respond. All eyes turned to him while the ears strained to hear the mysterious voice. The ethereal caller, raising his voice, proclaimed, when you come opposite to Pelotus, announce that great Pan is dead. The voice fell silent. All on board were silent for a time. What does this mean? Pan was a Greek god, but could a god really be dead. Eventually, they began to debate whether Thamos should accede to the request or avoid meddling in such matters. Thamos, ever the seaman, made his decision based on the conditions of the sea. If there was a breeze, he would sail past the island without muttering a word. If the wind and sea remained calm, he would announce what he heard, that the god Pan was dead. Really, Father? This is what you picked for a hundredth story? What's wrong? Pan? It's mythology. It's, we're telling a wholesome tale. It's got its research in Plutarch. Do you have any other recommendation? How about a real God like our blessed Lord? You know, we really haven't done one with the subject being our blessed Lord. There is one story that's been in the work for some time. So are you suggesting we should do this on our 100th episode? Eh, that will do. One favor. Can we keep the title name the same, Divine Detour? Yes, yeah, let's not deal with that. Very good. Okay, I will go ahead and start. Start from today's story. So start from the top. Yes. Got it. Today's story, Divine Detour. 
our Lord paused along the journey and turned to the apostles. The apostolic band was 25 miles away from their operation headquarters in Capernaum. The apostles could see in the distance, towering over the beautiful and vivacious foliage of the land, the region's famous massive rock. The apostles knew about the vile practices in the pagan temple located at a cave underneath the rock. Standing before them, the teacher posed a question he had never asked them before. An awkward silence ensued. His question penetrated the depths of each apostle. They seemed very small as they gazed at the massive rock in the distance. One of the group cleared his throat. All eyes turned to Simon the fisherman. Simon looked around at his companions, then made direct eye contact with his master. Simon gave his response, which led our blessed Lord to speak these famous words. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Against the backdrop of an impressive rock above a cave, considered to be the portal to Hades in the region of Caesarea Philippi, our blessed Lord made the solemn promise that the gates of hell would not prevail against his church under the leadership of his rock, St. Peter and his successors. What is not well known is that standing by the cave is a pagan temple to Pan, a half-goat god of nature and of shepherds whose ghoulish features would startle and scare the unsuspecting passerby, causing them to panic. His companions would come to seek out revelations through acts of debauchery. It was Pan's death that Thamos the Egyptian seaman announced as he sailed past Pelotus on the Ionian Sea. This proclamation occurred around the same time that our blessed Lord, the Good Shepherd, took his apostles on a detour to the region of Pan's temple to ask a simple question. Who do you say that I am? To which Simon Peter, under the inspiration of the Father, responded, You are the Christ, the Son of of the living God. And for this week, that's the word. Today's story is our hundredth story for That's the Word. And while this story is a hundredth story, this is actually one of the first stories we ever drafted. This story has taken over two years to complete. We started working on this actually in August or September of 2020. And it's taken until 
now in 2022 for the story to see the light of day. And actually, if you think about it, we were working on this story before we ever published our first episode of That's the Word, which came out in November, December 2020. So it has been a very long time. And the reason why it's taken so long is this has gone under many iterations. This is just a little bit of how we kind of make a story behind the scenes here at That's the Word. The original idea was to focus on the place of Caesarea Philippi because we wanted to share the fact that there's significance of why Jesus chose that spot to which to say to Simon, you are Peter, you are rock behind this massive, massive rock in a cave that was associated as the portal to Hades, the gates to hell. And he says, you know, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. So that's kind of what we came into. And we were trying to figure out how can we talk about this story in a way that will fit our podcast. One way of talking about this was actually coming to the realization that Salome, who was the daughter of Herodias, who asked that John the Baptist be beheaded by Herod, was actually in this area. So one concept was maybe she would be the character through which we would tell this story out of fear that our Lord would be coming for her. But uh, what did we decide at the end with that? Couldn't find any real basis for that. It would have been an interesting twist, but yeah, there wasn't any historical basis for that beyond the fact that she was there. So then we kept on doing some research to realize that there was a temple dedicated to the god Pan. And Pan, among his many titles, is the god of shepherds. And so the thought was, all right, here's another layer to understand this story. Jesus, the good shepherd, is coming to claim that he is Lord over everything and his church will not be dominated by Hades. And so we thought, well, we can do the battle between two shepherds. But it just really wasn't coming together, was it? No. The key here is, and that's the word stories, there has to be a twist. It has to have a satisfying ending. And that just wasn't happening. There were very interesting facts, but it wasn't coming together nicely in the end. So the next thing we learned was that actually Plutarch talks about the fact, the ancient world talks about this episode of somebody named Thamos on the sea who hears that the god Pan was declared dead under the reign of Tiberius, who was the emperor during the time of Jesus's public ministry. And that was a fascinating story because Thamos does indeed go ahead and declare, as was requested, that Pan was dead. It was huge news. And so when that ship arrived in Rome, the news had already anticipated them, so much so that Thamos was brought before the emperor to share what had happened and the emperor goes in to uh, investigate this, but there's nothing further about the investigation. And so that was another twist to try and figure out, can we tie in the fact that the death of Pan is associated with Jesus's public ministry, which finds its culmination, of course, in his sacrifice on the cross, but that fell flat. Not only that, though, but that this is, I believe, the only place in the gospels where Jesus goes anywhere near a pagan temple. And this is specifically Pan's pagan temple. And so it was something that we thought this was interesting to share because we have never heard anybody make this connection before. And it was really frustrating because we could not find a good story format in which to share it. Uh, and so it actually went into our graveyard pile for many, many months. And there was a time where we thought, we're just never going to be able to share this story. We considered on our one-year anniversary just sharing this just flat because we weren't going to get it into the format. Yes. And then we came across with, hey, since this is our 100th episode, let's do something very novel. John Peter actually interrupts me. And then we were able to tie the stories together. So we were very excited to share this story with everyone and we thought this would be a great way, especially as a thank you to all our listeners for supporting us throughout these first hundred stories, 
to be able to share a story of our blessed Lord and give greater context to a very popular and famous and important event in the gospel, Matthew 16, and to give deeper significance to understand what our Lord was doing when he made Peter the rock of the church. As part of our 100th episode celebration, we're going to be doing two bonus episodes talking about our favorite stories from the last two years. So we're going to do one episode on stories one through 50, and then in a few months we'll do episodes 51 through 100. So we would really love to hear from you what your favorite stories are. Check out the show notes or go to our website, thunderrock.org, and let us know what your favorite stories have been from stories one through 50. If you enjoy That's the Word, please share the word. You can see the story extras for this story, Divine Detour, at thunderrock.org, where you can see the collection of all the different things we found about Caesarea Philippi and this one event in the gospel based off of our two years of research on this story that took forever to write. Thunderrock.org is also where you can sign up for our weekly newsletter and where you can find our social links and our email if you have any feedback or story ideas. Thanks for listening and join us next Wednesday for another wholesome tale for the whole family.